You did the, the Next Level Clinic last year, and uh, it was it filled up. You had a great mm -hmm. experience with it. So I, first of all, kind of take me through the clinic last year and, and what you do for where it, what makes it so special and so different from a, a lesson or a school or clinics that we've seen in the past. Well, what I've tried to do is just try to think of kind of what's not out there. And, and like I said before, last fall when I was doing this clinic was going back to when I was 22, 21, and just starving for information. Like back then, the only thing that you could really find that had anything in it was the Spinduins back then, you know, and they would always have an article. It's whoever was doing good or whoever made the finals for the first time. And I would always read all those articles. It's like what, what got them over the top? What, what was it that they did or who was it that they were around or what was it that just, they went from an amateur or a circuit cowboy to going to the NFR. And, you know, I got to thinking this driving down the road one time and it was like, man, if, if any other kid was to want to try to find that out and go to a school, there's not really any kind of school that would provide that kind of information, you know. If you go to a school now, you got to kind of sit in line and depending on how big the school is and, you know, you're going to probably be the only person in there that ropes that good. And so the conditions really ain't going to be set up for you to really get a whole lot if you're wanting to make the finals or the circuit finals or, you know, things like that. Or um, So I was like, well, shoot, let's just kind of test the waters and see what it would be like to have a school for two and a half days where we kind of like a boot camp or a basically a next level clinic like you would and say like football or baseball or I think any other sport has places to where you can go and it's it's like top level you know running behind barriers timing yourself films working out um, classroom stuff on how to take care of things and we had uh, Ty Tipton who came out and showed everyone how to mainline and take care of their horses we had classic ropes come and give demonstrations on what it takes to get sponsored um, had a top level horseman come in and and how to kind of explain how the body and the feet work on a horse and get the horse's perspective of what you're trying to do and really just tried to surround anything that any question that a kid could have and try to arm them with as much ammunition as they could so when they got home that if they work hard enough they're they're no different than me I mean anybody if I can make it anybody can make it I mean I made it nine times and there's days I practiced and I don't know how I ever made it once you know um, I, not a lot of talent here you know I remember Conor McGregor saying that it's not a lot of talent it's it's hard work and but there's one thing to be able to work hard at something and not get nowhere because you don't have the information you know maybe you got some glitches in your foundation or your fundamentals you know and the harder you work you're just gonna turn more bad habit into worse you know so to be able to at least leave here and kind of have an idea of what you need to work on and then you can put in the work and the hard hours and you know that's that to me that's what I felt like put me over the top was surrounding myself with the guys who wrote better and being very uncomfortable with the fact that I was the worst guy in the practice pen and just soaked it up and then from there I would go home and I would work as hard as I could at it and to be able to kind of explain that now to the next kids and the next generation that's wanting to rope for a living and I don't know it just felt like um, there's a, a void for that and I was just wanting to see if, if I had any luck feeling it. Well I, I know you did absolutely and that's what's so unique about the Next Level Clinic is it it's designed for someone that's wanting to get to a high level with their roping and really want to see where they're at. When you say you set up the barrier, you had the NFR arena and your, you know, your main arena. So you kind of got both experiences with the rodeo runs. You, you got to try it on a few days in a row, right? It kind of kind of takes. Yeah, and had a that. jackpot at the end, and yeah, you know, it was funny that some of the guys that roped the best had the hardest time running up there and just catching the dummy. You know, so it's, and I get it. You got to go fast in order to have yourself have a chance. But I'm telling you, you give Luke Brown or Clay Tryon or any of them top level guys, if they just got to go knock one down clean, they are not going to miss. So it's, it's not just about the speed. You've got to know how to close, you know, just, I've heard the quote forever, you get, you drive for show, you putt for dough. And it's no different roping, you know, there's, you've got to be able to pull off shots and make things happen. And then if it just, for whatever reason at the end, opens wide up, you've got to be able to put that ball in the hole. You got to be able to 
get that steer and set them up as best you can and most consistently for your healer that you know you're going to finish the roping. So there's there's more to it than just you know being flashy. You've got to there's there's times you got to use your head too. So right, and this is specifically designed for headers, is what you're yes. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yep. specifically designed for headers. Uh, you, you know your your main deal is to try to find weaknesses and strengths in the arena. Uh, you're going to set them up with different barriers, right? Different yep. situations, jackpot situations, mm -hmm. a scenario where you just have to catch, as well as go fast, and so that they know, like, hey, this is where I'm stacking up. This is where I'm weak. This is yep. where I'm strong. And and I think that that really it gives them some great perspective, as well as you're able to get tips and, and things like that in the arena while they're working with you, because it's also pretty exclusive too. You're not taking, I mean, how many students you, are you taking for the clinic? Eight. Eight students. And I also encourage them to bring their partner if they can come, you know, so you can kind of build a run together where you can, you can kind of um, get the healer's perspective. And, you know, last year there's a couple of guys that brought their healers and then by the end of it, like the healers are like, yes, this is exactly like now I can see now I can see where everything was going, you know, to where you can kind of learn to communicate to try to develop a run together. And like I said, the healers can come for free, um, you know, to to be able to help their headers communicate with their healers, too, is just as important to get the perspective of, man, when they handle this certain way, I know where they're going. Or if they're giving their heads back, you know, I just don't know, you know, to, to be able to understand that and to be able to see it on film. And, you know, there's just so many little things to hidden that uh, that makes it hard. But in the same sense, um, there's a lot to learn if you want to get better. And and communicating with your partner, I think, is a huge, a huge advantage to be able to learn to do that also. Right. The other deal, you know, you, you mentioned it briefly, but I think we got to get into the details of it because it's so important to understand. You brought in people that specialize in, in certain things. First of all, a vet. And, and I think there's so much uh, that goes into our horses and understanding, A, what, what we need to do and how we can take care of them, but like being able to mainline one. And mm -hmm. I mean, how many times do we get in a bad situation where we have to be able to just give them whatever, some, some banamine and hit a mainline right there until we can get them to a vet clinic or something. And that might save your best horse's life and, mm -hmm. and in turn absolutely. might save your, your whole heading career. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Cause it's, it's won or lost on a horse, you know? And so to be able to know, um, how to get yourself out of bind, like you said, is huge. Cause I, I've been there a bunch, you know, Patron was one of my best horses ever. And he was, he was a, prone to colic a lot. And so I had to, there's times I saved his life. And then the, the, the last time just, it just finally gave out, but you know, I can count on more than two hands how many times I saved his life just be, by being able to know how to mainline a horse and knowing what I'm looking for and, you know, things like that. And and, and when Ty came and, and spoke to a lot of kids, you know, they were great too. They had so many good questions. And there's even some questions that got brought up that I was like, man, I never thought about that. And and Ty answered them and like, man, I, so I mean, I learned just as much as a lot of them did. And so it was great. Like I said, even if you think you know everything and you know, someone brings up a good question and, and uh, between that and having, having Rhett here and, you know, and, and Ken Bray was awesome from Classic Ropes, getting the perspective of the sponsors, you know, just like we talked earlier about being aware sometimes, even for me, like walking through the stands, even if you're having a bad day, you're, you're influencing somebody, whether it's good or bad, and, you know, so it was, it was great, just all the way around, in and out of the arena, and I loved it. I, when I, when I was done with it this fall, I was like, man, that was I know they had to get something out of it because I know I got something out of it, and I'm the one, you know, doing the teaching the clinic. And right. so I, I was inspired when I was done. I'm like, I, I want to do more of these and see if, like I said, this, that, that you know, that there's going to be somebody that comes out of this that, you know, when my career is over with, be cool to be like, man, I remember when when that kid was here at the house, you know, and you're, now I'm watching him on TV, and you know, so that and that's that's why we're down here is to try to, you know, make it better and make the sport better and help help out the ones that, that want to get there and well so. and and it's it's for those the ones that are wanting to get better a, as a whole they're wanting to get better as understanding Kim Bray is I mean essentially in charge of Equibrand correct yeah. Yeah. so when you've got the person that the president or CEO I don't know exactly his job title but he's the man over there yeah and he's telling you what a sponsor looks for and they probably He's giving receive. you insights. If you want, if you want something on your shirt with the best ropes and the best products in the industry. Like you get a, you get a front row seat of what it takes. It's awesome, yep. you know. And then on top of it, they see the most resumes. Mm -hmm. They have the best Absolutely. endorsees. They have, they have the top notch deal. So you now know what it takes to get on with that team. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just that's something that we hear all the time. Even. I think every company is, oh, or you hear from every 
cowboy. Like if I just had some sponsors, right. and so that's that's just another little hack that you can help how to how to represent yourself. And I think that's so so important. Well, and he brings such a good a good amount of information to the table too. Of like, you know, so many guys are like, hey, you know, I'd like to get a rope deal, as opposed to like, you know, instead of you having your hand out, look at it as a sponsors deal. Like, what can I do to help? You know, what can I do to to be on the team and to where, like, when you, you know, when you come up to a sponsor, where it's not just, hey, like, can you help me out here so I can make the finals? You know, it's more like, hey, what can I do to, to contribute to the team? When, when you start thinking about that, because that's just like having employees, you know, instead of someone just, man, I need a job, as opposed to what can I do to make this company better? You know, there's a huge, you know, that's, that's a lot of what, you know, companies look for also, is somebody that's looking for a handout with somebody who wants to, endorse this product that believes in it and you know so there's a lot to, to that side of it too and you know Ken does such a good job with that and like I said I love everything about that company and so because uh, that was when I first started thought about this this idea that was on my fan page you know I get a lot of people is like how do I get to the next level and how do I get sponsors that seemed to be the two biggest things and then a bunch of horsemanship questions too along there but it just kind of sparked an idea of like hey let's just bring all this and in one school. Right. Well, and, and Charlie, how much is won and lost on a horse? Yeah. I mean. Oh, absolutely. So much. And, and then well, just give me a little bit on Rhett. And I know like I, I personally have went to Rhett for some riding lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, you recommended it to me. It was a great experience for me. But uh, he, we've got a lot of video with him on X Factor as well. But just kind of talk about that. What he what you kind of seen that he was able to teach and what you kind of learned from yeah. Rhett and, and bringing in a kind of a, essentially a specialist on just your horsemanship. Yeah, and, and, and here's another thing I did too is some of the people that I thought that I looked up to the most and that I think most of everyone else that has their own unique uh, strengths. Um, I talked to Trevor, I talked to Bobby Moat, I talked to uh, uh, Caleb Driggers, and, and the biggest questions I would ask them was like, what was it that you felt like made you who you are? At what point in time, like what, what was it that you felt like sent you over the top and made you the best in the game. And Trevor's right off the bat without a hesitation was horsemanship. He said, that's where I feel like that that made me better than everybody else was that I could get an average horse to be good and I could get a good horse to be great and I could get a great horse to be phenomenal. And there's no doubt in my mind because I've seen him do it. And you know, he, he learned the feet. The feet is complicated. Like I understand the body pretty good. We understand that a rein moves the front end over, that a leg moves the side over, and if you, you know, put your leg behind the back cinch, that'll move the back end around there. I mean, we got the basics. But like when you know the feet, Joseph Harrison, Trevor Brazil, like they're, they're some of the ones that where they know how to put that horse in the right spot. For a header, I mean, that's you, like there's a lot of guys I think that can feel it good. Like I think Luke Brown and Driggers, they got a great feel of when to put the feet in the right spot to get the steer to come back in a certain in a certain spot to where um, the healer's got the best chance to win. Trevor knows how to, he knows the feet. He knows exactly how to put it right there and then to finish and do all that stuff. And and then hearing about Trevor talk about when, when he was younger that he did work for some guys that, um, you know, clean the stalls and, and then getting to ride some of the good horses and some of the top trainers. And I've had Red out here and stuff, and I've rode with Chris Cox a bunch and learned so much. And 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 with Red too was, um, we'll just bounce ideas back and forth. And and he's so good because he's so patient too. Of like, when when he came here, like there were some kids that were having some problems in the corner logging steers, and he could just have them lope in a circle, and be able to find their strengths and their weaknesses like that. And he was so good because he's so patient too, and, and he talked so well, and to where he could help him like a little bit of foot there and a little release here, and get to where they could get a feel for him. Just in each individual kid, you know, within 10 minutes, all of a sudden you could see the kid like, oh man, I, yeah, I get that, I can feel that now. And you know, to where he understands to where when your horse is, loses his hip right there pulling, that you're losing the steer's head. To where this is something simple as like now when you're doing that now keep that horse's hip back up underneath you so that way you can keep pressure on the head you know just so many little details to where you learn how to use your feet you learn the mechanics of of how to operate your horse to where then you can put your your steer in a in a, in a good position to heal so it was it was it was just great because i i was i learned so much just watching him and that those are things that that i couldn't have taught 
you know, I could tell that like, hey, your horse is kicking his butt out, you gotta get him put it back in there. But to be able to slow it down into a lope without a steer, you know, to where you can get the feel of that before you even before you even throw a loop, that was that it was great. So I had that, that same experience with Rhett. Uh, loped a few circles. He said, hey, this is what's happening. And we slowed it down. And it was a great experience for me. I, I got to use an example for Trevor. If anyone wants to, to look at that, watch NFR film on Trevor. And how many times does the wall come up close and he gives his guy one more chance to mm -hmm. heal the steer and face without yeah. having to go up the wall? How many hundreds of thousands of dollars has he made in just that one arena by doing that? And, and so that's, that's just a small example of horsemanship mm -hmm. and being so important. One of the best quotes I'd heard, and I think I was 22, 24, right in around that area. And, um, and I was watching, it was Rich Skelton's, I think, Rope for the Gold, maybe. Maybe one of his first DVDs that he had out there. It might have been VHS back then, I can't remember. But um, he had, I think it was Popeye Bolting House was talking about Rich and, and his horses. And I remember it till, till this day, he said, it's not, it's not how much you can win on a horse, but how much a horse keeps you from winning. And I sat and thought about that at the time. And I'm like, I had a couple horses that I'd had. And the reason I didn't sell them was like, well, I can win on them sometimes, you know, so, you know, I got to keep them. And then I went back and looked at all the times they cost me money. And I was like, man, so that's, that's why I'm not getting where I need, you know. And so that was just a huge, huge just like window that opened right there of the things that I never looked at or how I never looked at it that way was like, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm not getting any better, right. you know. And I think one year I remember it was, it was that same year that uh, one of my horse got crippled before Sisters, um, Sisters, Oregon. It was a, a big rodeo up there at the time. It was a tour rodeo up there up the, at the time, and everyone was there. And I had never won a first round in my entire life, or even was close. And I, uh, Richard E. Gurren had uh, Calhoun back then, the yellow horse. Yep. Um, and he was, he did not care. He, he was one of them guys, he was, he, I loved him. And he wrote so good, he, he was before his time. But he was like, get on my horse. I'm like, man, your horse is, it, he won horse of the year last year, I'm not getting on your horse, like no way. He's like, I don't care. He said, what else are you going to ride? Yourself? <laughs> well, I mean, I'll find something. He goes, get on him. If you know Pook, everyone, they yeah, know exactly he's, how he's, he's like, get on him right now. Blunt. I'll get the other side of the stirrup. I'll get this one. And uh, so he got my stirrups all set up, and I'm nervous. I'm like, I cannot believe I'm on this horse. They're winning the world and everything. Right. And I got on him, and I rocked the barrier back, and from a coil back and turned the steer, and my guy roped a leg to win the first round. And it was so easy. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I just had a chance to win the first round before, and ever. I've never had that chance. Right. And hey, what I'm telling you, when I got my rope up, this horse was still kicking dirt out. Like he was just, I mean, gritty and just scored like he was, like he'd never had a steer run on him before. Like, like he was dumb. Like he, I didn't know if he was going to go or not. And what I'm telling you, when I dropped these reins, when I cleared the box, he was still flinging dirt. I could feel, I mean, he was just getting there. And then just roped and then just melted off and turned the steer off and then just whoosh. And I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm missing. Yep. This is why I'm not winning right here. This was the coolest thing I'd ever felt in my entire life at that time. And Jet Johnson, he always said it too. He was like, you don't know a good one until you've rode one. And at that point in time, that was the first time I'd ever rode a good one. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm missing out here. So I just had to figure out how to get around the guys I knew how to make them and figure out a way to keep finding them and right and I think that's why it's just such an important step and, and getting some gra and getting you know feedback from you who you, you're a great horseman and that's something you make a point of but you bring in guys like that and so I, I just think it's a it's a great fit to someone that is looking for that that edge and and you're going to get very realistic uh, opinions and you're going to see exactly where you're at with your horsemanship your horses uh, so I think that's just that's so awesome. The other thing you do, Charlie, I don't think we got into this yet, but when you said boot camp, you weren't kidding. I, <laughs> I mean, I know you're you're a gym guy. You get up and get after it every day. Uh, kind of talk about that. Uh, what what you also did with these guys? Yeah, we got up and we 6 a.m. We we uh, we didn't do it. I mean, it wasn't just hard hard, but just enough to kind of get to where you got up and felt good and, and didn't feel like you needed sleep to get it done. Um, 6 a.m. We 
started jogging around the barn and I had a little deal on my phone tells you when you've gone a mile and we jogged for a mile and and uh, for 15 minutes and then kind of cooled off or whatever and then we did some ab stuff then we then I got everyone some bands and we did shoulder um, just main thing is is the in team roping it seems like back which I struggle with and now I'm starting to struggle with my shoulders a little bit is if you want to be in here for the longevity you're gonna have to learn how to take care of yourself and I know that most cowboys have been that's the cowboy code from the past is you know grab a beer or some whiskey and some Advil and you know which sounds cool but it's really not very realistic when it comes to longevity um, you know we're at it's it's to the point now where it's not love and drink and fighting cowboys it's it's a business now um you know if if you want to take it seriously it, this is a business out here because guys right now they rope for money and they don't rope for fun you know it used to be it was just a good time and did it while you could and until it's time to you got broke or had family or whatever but now i mean there's people that still have families and still rodeo for a living and and there's kids coming up and so um just to make sure, I mean, there's so much to being able to keep your shoulders right. Your rotator cuff, there's a lot of um, kind of build up just roping that is hard on it. Um, you know, your core, there's a lot to um, when your back's sl um, slipping in and out, having to do with how good a shape and how flexible you are. You know, and then just running and, and making one mile as hard and miserable as you can make it. Right. to where you're fighting you know the the mind of saying that I want to quit and you do it anyway you know and those are all the things that you go through July and August and September you know that that if you can't fight it if you can't beat those thoughts at home it's gonna be real hard to beat those thoughts when you're trying to grind against the best in the world and so these are all these things is and hey I'm telling you it was pretty cool when I walked out of that door at 5:55 a.m. it was kind of like watching the movie the Cowboys Every one of those kids is all sitting there waiting on me. Right. I was like, heck yeah, let's get after it. Well, and Charlie, I, I think that that's so cool. And, and to start getting that understanding and put that, that mental toughness that you build through that. And, and the other thing that I, I don't think a lot of people understand is when you're out there rodeoing year long, you, your mind has to be prepared constantly. And so what we put in it, how we work on it, but what we eat, nutrition. Mm -hmm. and so if you're exercising and taking care of your body, you're more likely to eat better that day. And I know like I, the 7 a.m. slacks, I watch, you're watching the score and you have a protein shaker. And you know, I, I know, I know that Charlie is on point at 7 a.m. And it don't matter if you have zero sleep that night before, which is probably likely. And, and so that's, that's what I like to see is, you know, you're, you're, that's how you're going about it. And you're kind of setting that foundation for how to, to duplicate that and have a strong mind from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, as well as a strong body too. And so that's, it's just working everything together. So I thought that's what well, I thought. And, was and so studying unique. the best athletes in the world and, and, you know, they eat right. You know, any YouTube that you listen to on any, hardly almost, I would just probably say 90% of your top athletes have got a pretty good nutrition, workout ethic, and, 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 you know, just watching is probably politically incorrect or, to bring up Tom Brady because you either love him or you hate him, but at 40 some years old and still winning Super Bowls and taking care of himself, I mean, I'd, I'd tell every one of these guys, hey, look at the scouting report. You want to call him lucky or you want to call him whatever you want to call him. Look at the scouting report. There ain't a whole lot of talent there. That is all hard work. And that guy is 41 or 42, whatever he was when he won the Super Bowl, again this year. And he was not a strong enough arm, uh, not couldn't make plays downfield, you know, wasn't a playmaker. All the things that they said that he would never amount to, and look at him. Yeah. You know, or, so you can't tell me that you don't have them same abilities, you know. I agree. Or even look at him this year. Yeah. They said the same thing about him this year. Yeah, he's toast. No yep. way. Weak arm. Mm -hmm. Can't make the plays. Well, <laughs> look who's Super winning. Super Bowl champ again. Yep. You know. Well, Charlie, that's, uh, I'm so excited about it. Uh, I mean, I, I think that that's the coolest thing. Two and a half day clinic, you're covering every aspect. You know, you, you just basically are setting someone up to get whatever they want out of it. And uh, it's designed for headers that want to get to a high level. And it's, what's so cool is, I mean, I, I feel like you, you'd be there with this, uh, this statement. It doesn't necessarily matter what level of roping you're at. 
I mean, it's, it's where you want to go with it, is where this is designed to be, and this is where you can find out. So I think that that's what makes it such a unique fit. It doesn't matter if you're an older guy that's wanting to get out there and rodeo or wanting to, you know, to take something, you know. Well, and there's, and there's a screening it. process, like when they call. Um, there was a young lady from up there in Oregon, came all the way down to it. And she was like, I know I'm an only a four or a four plus, I forget. And I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, we're going to be behind the barriers and stuff. I don't know if this is going to be a good fit. She's like, don't count me out. I want to come. I want to get better. Like, I don't want to be where I'm at. And I said, well, if you're fine running behind the barriers and mixing it up with the guys, she was like, there's only one way to get better. I'm like, man, you're, you said all the right things. I'll see you at the school. Right. And, you know, she was a eight to nine second, pretty consistent. Um, kind of run and we got to where after a while she was I think five four on one and I'm like you don't have to be this fast all the time but there's going to be times where you come back 10th high call or whatever or say back up there at home a lot of them are high man go so if you're winning it you actually go first you know there might be times where you might have had a leg but you still have to come back but you're going to have to be under six to get a check so no matter what you still got to be able to have enough coals in your bag or whatever um that there's going to be times that you're going to be in a situation where you got to take your first shot when you're in there and get them to where they're healable fast. And so there's, there's ways you can be faster without having to throw all your rope. And I'm telling you when she left, it was, it was cool because it's never been five before and, and just got to where she was getting so much more aggressive and being able to see everything happen faster. And like I said, it, you, you, you said it perfectly. Even if, even if you're not at that level and going to the pro rodeos, even just trying to get better, like I, we watched a lot of people get a lot better and, and get a lot of information when they left here. So it was, it was exciting for me. Right. And I can't stress that enough is it's limited to eight people mm -hmm. and there is a screening process because mm -hmm. that's the one thing is we're trying to set it up to be, uh, uh it is the next level clinic. So mm -hmm. it's not something that's, I mean, it's, it's pretty grueling. You know, you're going to work them out in the mornings. There's, there's going to be study. There's going to be all, all kinds of different aspects, but it's for highly motivated and driven people. You know, and at the end, at the end too, it was so much fun too, because we, we sat down there with notebooks and, and uh, just wrote down goals. You know, what do we want to do next year? All right. Because um, if you have a dream and you just dream about it, it's just a dream. Right. You know, there has to be some action. So to break down your dream, now we got to have a goal. How are we going to accomplish this dream? You know, to be able to start having and understand like how those things start happening and, and run them down in detail. All right, we got a five year plan. All right, perfect. This is what we want to do in five years. Okay, what are we going to get done this year? All right, then we break it back down. What are we going to do in a month? All right, now what are we going to do today? Because today starts how to start attaining that, that dream in five years. You know, instead of everyone saying, man, I just want to make the finals, that was me. That was exactly, I can quote you, man, how, how do I make the finals? Well, I didn't have any idea. I had a dream, but I, had no, I didn't know how to fulfill a goal. Right. You know, so until I kind of got around those guys and learned how to win, then, all right, I think I backed my goal down. I wanted to win the, the NPRA and the PWRA up there and win the Columbia River Circuit. Got around some of these guys, found some decent horses, got back up there and, and did it. And dang near won the circuit. But I won both the amateur associations, came back down, got, and then, and then I was hungry after that. I finally got one of my goals done that I had set out to do, and um, then it just kind of kept growing from there, and then I kind of started understanding kind of how that worked. But to, to have a dream and no plans, it's usually just, just a dream. Right. So, so we wrote all that down. We sat down and talked about it and, and got every one of them dreamed out there ask them what their goals were and then and what's their plan from there and a lot of them are really good with it you know a lot of them i think there's so much information on youtube now that that uh, there were so many of them that kind of even almost knew that but then the ones that didn't like i said that was that would have been me at their age i would have had no clue how to put all that plan to work right so just helping with that too i think it's so important to understand that there's not going to be a magical bullet that you're going to get Absolutely. probably ever yeah it's going to be knowledge a plan and working the plan consistently and so the the best knowledge we can put and the best plan that we can put in front of us is by far the the best way we can uh get to a high level get to the next level yeah absolutely hello i'm charlie crawford and my next level clinics are going to be may 10th 11th and 12th and june 7th 8th and 9th i'm going to have two of them this year it's limited to eight headers welcome to bring your healers for free there will be a screening process, so my phone number will be located on the on the post that's down below. 
and give me a call and we'll um, get everybody written down. There will be deposits. It'll be a $500 non-refundable deposit and it's a thousand dollars all together so when I get when we go through the screening process I get the check and then your name will be put on the list and um, it'll be located here in Stephenville Texas here at my place rain or shine we'll find an indoor if it's raining um, but hopefully the weather will be good there's plug-ins or stalls everything here we need so hopefully look forward to seeing you come spring so we can get after it and get them goals met